So we already spoke about static equilibrium and we also spoke about torque. Now in this example we're going to look at an application of torque. In other words, where is torque used and why is torque important? Well it turns out that torque is important whenever we talk about static equilibrium problems. Whenever our objects or systems are undergoing static equilibrium. That means no velocity, zero velocity and zero acceleration in any direction. So let's begin with the following example. Suppose we have a board of mass M that serves as a seesaw on which two children are standing. So child one is placed 2.5 meters away from our um, triangle that's balancing our board and child one has a mass of 40 kilograms. Likewise, suppose we have a child two that has a mass of 35 kilograms and this child is placed some distance along this direction. Now we want to find at what distance should child 2 stand to balance the seesaw horizontally. So we want to find what the distance of this length should be of this section of our board so that our board is completely balanced. Now note that if I take this child away, our board will rotate this way. If I take this child away, our board will rotate this way because there is a mass here and no mass on this section. And we simply want to find the point on which or along which we should place this child so that our board is not rotating in any direction and it's not moving vertically or horizontally. So we're going to make the assumption, the initial assumption, that our board is under static equilibrium. So that means no kind of velocity, no type of acceleration, no rotation, no translational motion. So we want to find what this distance is as well as the normal force of our object. Now in this example we're going to choose our object to be this 5 kilogram board. So before we begin, we have to choose what the pivot point is. So we could choose any section to be the pivot point, but normally our pivot point is the point about which our rotation would occur. So if we take this object away, our, our pivot point would be this point because our board will rotate at, along this direction while this section, this point, would stay stationary. As you rotate, if you fix that point, our board will rotate this way while that point in the middle, above on the apex of the triangle, will remain stationary. So we choose this guy to be our pivot point. So, once again, before we begin, we have to make the assumption that our board is under static equilibrium because we're trying to find what the distance is. So our initial goal is to basically assume that, all right, so our board is in fact on the static equilibrium and now we want to find what this distance is. But before we find the distance, let's find the normal force. To find the normal force, I basically have to find all the forces that are interacting or acting on my object. Once again, my object in this case is my 5 kilogram board. So let's find what are all the forces acting on my object. So let's erase this guy for a second. So the first force acting on my object is the force due to this guy. So this guy, this mass, creates a force due to gravity. So our force is acting downward and this is simply m1 times g. The mass of our object 1, our person 1, times g. Likewise, the mass of object 2, our child 2, uh, multiplied by g is acting downward this way. Now likewise, what else is acting? Well, we have 5 kilograms, our board is 5 kilograms. And that means this also acts downward, creates a downward force coming out from the center of mass or our pivot point. So this is simply mass of the object given by capital M multiplied by g where capital M is simply 5 kilograms. Now, Notice we make the assumption that our object is on static, under static equilibrium and that means that our net forces sum up to zero. But in this case, we, all our forces are pointing downward and that means if we simply had these three forces acting on our object, our board should go down, right? But it's not going down, it's balancing, right? We're assuming it's on the static equilibrium. That means another force must be acting on our object and that's the force called the normal force. It's what this object, our triangle, exerts 
on our board and it, and it points up. So let's represent our Fn this way. So let's choose our upward direction to be positive and let's choose our downward direction to be negative. Notice we have no uh, forces along the x direction, only forces along the y direction. So once again, because we're making an assumption that, that our system is under static equilibrium, all the forces going up are equal to all the forces going down. So if we sum up all our forces, we should get zero. And this is represented here. So the sum of all the forces along the y direction should, should sum up to zero. So let's see if that's actually true. So let's write all our forces. So we have force normal going upward minus and all these guys because they're all going down uh, downward along the y-axis. So uh, mass of the board times g minus mass of child 1 times g minus mass of child 2 times g. Now let's bring all these guys to the right and let's leave our force n on the left because we're solving for this. This is our unknown and these are our known. So let's bring everything to this side, leave fn on the left and let's, <coughs> let's take out a common term from all these guys. We take out the g and we simply get our normal force that's acting on our object, on our 5 kilogram board due to this pivot, this triangle is equal to g which we took out times mass 1 plus mass 2 plus mass 3 because when we bring these guys over they all become positive and now we simply plug in our values, our knowns so mass 1 plus mass 2, 40 plus 35 gives us 75, plus 5 gives us 80. So 80 kilograms is our mass, multiplied by 9.81 is approximately 785 newtons. This is the force, the normal force, that's acting upward due to this object, the triangle, on our mass of the board. So we found part two of our question. Let's find the part one. At what distance should the child be placed? away from this point. So we want to find, let's erase these forces because we're not using them anymore. So we want to find what the distance is from our triangle in the middle to our person, to where we place the child. We want to find this distance, right? We want to find the length of this. Now we said that this, uh, this section is 2.5 meters right now notice that this doesn't have to be this right this distance is not the same thing as this in fact this distance should be either less or larger than this and that's because these masses are not the same so technically because this has a larger mass than this this distance should be longer than this and we'll and we'll see exactly that at the end for now we want to find our torques. So we already spoke about forces and we said that there is no translational motion and that means our object is not moving up and down, our board is not moving up and down, so our forces sum up to zero. Likewise, our object here is on the static equilibrium. So our seesaw is not rotating up and down. It's stationary like this, right? It's not moving. So there is no rotation going anywhere. That means the sum... Oh, <coughs> of all my rotation is zero. So the sum of my torque is zero. Now notice, if I take this person away, where will this object rotate? Where will my board rotate? Well, if I take this person away, this side will rotate this way, so it will rotate counterclockwise, while this side, if I take this object away, if I kick person one off, this object or this board will rotate clockwise. So let's choose our clockwise direction to be positive, our counterclockwise direction to be negative. And now we want to say the following, our sum of all net forces is equal to zero, right? So basically this guy minus this guy gives you zero. That's exactly what we see. The torque going clockwise minus the torque going counterclockwise because this guy we said is negative, this direction is negative, this direction is positive, and we simply replace the formula for torque. In this case, our angle is 90, so sine 90 becomes 1. So we simply have force times distance or force times lever arm. So in this case, our lever arm is 2.5, and our force going downward is mass 1 times g. So let's say that's for, uh, force 1 times 2.5, 
and it has a negative sign, so that's what that guy is. What about this guy? What about the torque on this section? Well, this is going downward, so it's po uh, so it's positive. It's going along the clockwise direction. So we have force two times our distance r, which is the unknown. This is our r. Now we know what force two is. It's simply m two times g. We know what force one is. It's simply for uh, m1 times g and we know what 2.5 is the distance from this point to this point we are left to find the r so let's bring everything we know to this side and everything we don't know we leave on our left side and we get r is equal to so this goes on this side we get f1 times 2.5 divided by f2 and this is our formula and now since we know all these variables we simply plug them in well what's force one force one is simply m1 times g force two is simply m2 times g the g's cancel out right these guys disappear and we're simply left with m1 which in our case is 40 kilograms times 2.5 divided by m2 in our case 35 we plug that into the calculator and we see that our distance is approximately 2.86 meters. So what that means is the following. Because we initially assumed that our object, our board, is under static equilibrium, we were able to find the distance that we should place this child away from this pivot point so that our board does not rotate and does not translate. So that means our distance the child should be placed away from this board, uh, away from this side, is to 0.86 meters. Notice that this is not the same as this. That means this length is shorter than this length. This length is longer.